Last time we talked about languages and we talked about decision problems. The idea of these is that they're a different way of thinking about functions. We also introduced this idea of finite state automata as this new model of computing that is uh, suitable for implementing infinite languages. In particular, the type of automata that we talked about last class. So there are actually several different kinds of finite state automata. We've talked about one kind of finite state automaton so far, and that's something that we call a deterministic finite state automaton, or DFA for short. Next week, we're going to be talking about something called a non-deterministic finite state automaton, just so that you have the formal name for the thing we've talked about so far. Finite state automata is kind of a catch-all term for a large category of things that involve states and transitions. In particular, we talked about deterministic finite state automata last class. We also talked about how we could use finite state automata to compute languages. If I say something like the language of a finite state automaton, that means the set of all strings which that automaton returned one for. That is the language that this finite state automaton computes. We could say that's the language of that finite state automaton, which is the set of all strings that it returns one for. So we introduced finite state automata last time. And we mentioned that they can do infinite languages, whereas Boolean circuits could not. So what we're going to show today is we're going to show that not only is it that uh, finite state automata can do some things that NAND circuits can't do, we're going to show that finite state automata can do everything NAND circuits can and more. So that is, we're going to show that this computing model of finite state automata is strictly more powerful than this computing model of NAND circuits by showing that finite state automata can do everything NAND circuits can do and more. It says that they're a strictly more powerful model of computing. So how can we show that finite state automata can do everything that NAND can do and more, that it's a strictly more powerful model of computing? Suggestions. We can show how we could maybe convert a circuit into a finite state automaton. What else do we need to show? Yes. Yes, this first one will end up showing that finite state automata are greater than or equal to NAND circuits. If we also find one language we can't do with NAND, that we can do with finite state automata, then that allows us to conclude that finite state automata are, say, strictly more powerful than NAND. So we're going to show everything NAND can do, finite state automata could do, and then we need to find at least one thing that finite state automata can do that NAND can't. We're going to do that second thing we listed first. We're going to show that there's at least one function we can do with finite state automata, but not NAND. Who can name one? Yeah, so infinite AND. I said infinite XOR on the slides, but infinite AND is just as good. So we've already done this. We've already shown that we can do infinite AND. NAND circuits can't do infinite functions. Therefore, that's already one thing that we couldn't do before. So now we're going to show that anything we can do with a NAND circuit, we can also do with finite state automata. And the way that we're going to do that, so I'm not actually going to show directly how I can convert any circuit into a finite state automaton. Instead, what I'm going to do is since we knew that NAND circuits were able to compute any finite function, if I can show that finite state automata can compute any finite function, then that means that I can do anything a circuit could do. Question. So that relationship, we call that incomparable. So two models of computing are incomparable if neither is strictly more powerful than the other. If they're non-equivalent and neither is strictly more powerful than, than the other. That is, there's some things this can do that the other one can't, and there are some things this can do that the other one can't. So we call that incomparable. We're not going to talk about any models of computing that are incomparable this semester, unfortunately. So in order to show that finite state automata are more powerful than NAND circuits, we're going to show that we can compute any finite function. Let's kind of reflect back about how it is that we could do any finite function with a NAND circuit. So we have this proof that we did a while back where we said we can do any finite function at all with a NAND circuit. The summary of the idea for how we did that was if I sort of manually pre-computed all of the input-output pairs for that finite function, there's only finitely many inputs, so if you give me long enough, I can do it eventually, then we can put all those input-output pairs in one big lookup table so that when you give me the actual input you want to know the answer for, I can just do a lookup in that big table I created. So that was the idea for how we did that 
with NAND circuits. This was the example that we looked at. Here is that table that I pre-computed of all the input-output pairs. Here is me building that table where I said for each input, there is the output that goes with it. And then when you give me the input that you actually care about, then we just do one big lookup in that table for that input to give the right answer. And we're gonna see that we can do something very similar with finite state automata in order to do any finite function that we might care about. Just like before, we're going to manually pre-compute all of our input-output pairs. There's only finitely many of them, so we can do that. And then we're gonna do a lookup, but instead of looking this up in a table, we're basically gonna do a lookup in a tree. Essentially, I'm gonna have a state for every single possible input that I could see. And then once I figure out which ones are final states versus non-final states, then what we can do is we're gonna do some traversal through this tree that we build to navigate to the right answer. So let's look at an example of what I mean here. So here is that same function from before. So what I'm gonna do is just like before, I'm gonna sort of pre-compute all of the input-output pairs. And then what I can do is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna have one state for every possible input. So in this case, I have these eight states here, one for each of those eight possible inputs. And then by looking in my table, I can determine which of these states should be final states and which of these states should be non-final states by saying anything that had a one as its output should be a final state in that machine. So now once I've done this, all I have to do is say, when you give me some input, I wanna make sure that the transitions you're gonna take inside this finite state automaton are gonna get you to what the output should be there. So for instance, if my input was one, zero, zero, then the path this finite state automaton is gonna take is it's going to transition right on a one, left on a zero, left on a zero, so we return one, because that was a final state. If I had one, one, zero, then we would go right on the one, right on the one, left on the zero. So in this case, we return zero because that was not a final state that we ended in. And then I have some extra states in here because we have to be able to make a path to these states that represent our possible outputs. And then if my input string was too long, then we wanna go into this trash state down here because we didn't want to do anything. So any finite function you give me, I'm gonna be able to have this binary tree-like thing in order to navigate to what the answer ought to be. So we can do any finite function with finite state automata. Questions? Yeah. So for a finite state automaton, we need to make sure, because they have this, this loop business to them, where the longer the string is, the more transitions you take, this finite state automaton is going to be able to, to sort of take as its input a string of any length. We only wanted to uh, return one for strings that were of length three. So for strings that were longer, we had that trash state that was, that was a non-final state. So now we already know this is a strictly more powerful model of computing, so we've made progress in the world of computer science. <laughs>